this Ric Flair, Ric Flair's final match. They've been announcing all the matches except whatever Ric Flair's final match is. What have we got now? Well, they announced, um, let me get to it. They announced um, the AAA match. And, you know, it's one of those things where AAA is trying to send this this uh, blowout match. Um, it is, uh, let me get to it. Um, it's basically this, a very similar match to the match that they had at, at the last Triple Mania. Um, the one in uh, Tijuana. It's going to be Ray Phoenix, Laredo Kid, Bandito, and Black Taurus. Um, they had the same match in 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 Tijuana. They had it was one. They had Vikingo in it as well. And I guess the only thing I can think of is um, Vikingo has no uh, visa, so he can't come up. Or they would have probably duplicated that match. That match was incredible. If you're into, um, you know, just what the, what a AAA showcase match would be, which is you know, a whole bunch of crazy moves and spots and everything like that. You know, Black Taurus is, you know, probably the best base in wrestling. And um, Ray Phoenix is one of the best flyers in wrestling. You know, very close to the best. Laredo Kid, obviously one of the best. And Bandito, um, who is hurt right now, but he is um, hopeful. Uh, that's going to, you know... Um, that might be his first match back, but I'm figuring that he that, that, but he was announced today, so he's hopeful for that one. Um, he may not be 100 percent, but Bandito, obviously, you know, incredible performer, you know, great all around performer. So they're going to tear the house down, um, you know, for what they are going to be there for. Um, it's going to be really tough for uh, the other promotions. I mean, every promotion is basically sending something. So, um, you know, and I think there's two impact matches and. New Japan match and and uh, you know yeah. So what's the story on Flair's last match? Uh, I don't know. He's. Well, it was like we had uh, what was supposed oh, match to be is... a six man. Yeah, we had the match, and, and I have then... no idea what the match is. And it's weird that they haven't announced it since the main event, and they already had they had the press conference, and you would think the press conference you're announcing the match. So it tells me that they must not be uh, settled for what the match is. Now Flair did. A promo. Flair did a hell of a promo the other day, and he, um, like the way he talked, it sounded like it was going to be a singles match, which is um, pretty ambitious um, compared to a six man. I mean, the, the six man that they were talking about with like FTR and Ric Flair against the Rock and Roll Express and a third partner. I mean that <laughs> that match sounded pretty. You know, if there is a safe way to do this, that would be it because Rick, you know, FTR and the Rock and Roll, you know, FTR could carry it ftr's i saw an ftr rock and roll express match from a couple months ago the, they've only had one the one i saw and i mean it was it was very good for what it was i mean ricky and robert obviously um are 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 very limited you know but they know what they're doing and ftr is extremely good at working with them i mean it would actually probably um get over I would say it would get over really good. Um, and, you know, Rick working with Ricky Morton is one of his best opponents he ever had. Um, granted, you know, they're a lot older now, but there is a comfort level there. Um, but, yeah, no, I don't know what's going on. Uh, no, nothing's been said. Uh, Flair has said that he will be... At first, he said he would be better than he was in 1999, um, later, he re realized that 1999 was uh, uh, 23 years ago and said maybe he won't be better than he was in 1999. But he says now he will be better than he was in 2009, which would have been... Uh, I don't know. That match he had, that ladder match with Foley was a pretty damn good match. Um, well, the best match that... That, that was... Uh, was it 2011? With the match with Foley, it was, were they, were they, it was were, somewhere were two thousand nine, ten, eleven, somewhere in there. Yeah, the that it match, was shockingly good. Yeah, that was the match that Foley got like uh, his last concussion in, and I think I think it was Foley's last match, and it was one of Flair's last matches as well. Flair's last match was an Impact against Sting. The last um, Flair wrestled Hogan in Australia. This would have been. 2010 i'm thinking whatever the whenever they did that tour maybe it was 2009 uh but it was before he went to impact and um i saw three flair hogan matches from that tour and the first one 
was really good, like like shockingly good. Um, and it was all Flair. You know, I mean, Flair just, you know, he knows how to carry. But, I mean, Flair, I mean, Flair looked so much better in that match than he did, like, in the match with Shawn Michaels. Um, which, by the way, he's actually kind of said he's going to be better than, than he was in the match with Shawn Michaels. Um, which, that is hard to believe just because, you know, 58 versus 73, that's a lot of years. But he's he's talking like he's going to be, you know... I don't know. There's. I don't see any way he could, be, he could be better than the Ric Flair that wrestled Hogan the first night of that Australia tour. The other two matches with Flair and Hogan weren't weren't particularly good because in that first match Hogan's hip went out and then he went because he's uh, you know the tour was built around Flair and Hogan. Hogan you know worked the other matches, but those matches were like filled with interference because Hogan you know couldn't even move at that point and and those matches were were not good. Um, you know they were. I guess they were passable. You know, the crowd liked him. But before Hogan's hip went out, you know, they had, you know, what would be, I mean, it was a genuinely good match. I mean, I was, you know, I think Rick was, so it was probably 2009 because I think Rick was 60 at the time. So, but there's still a big difference between 60, and, there's a huge difference between 60 and 73. Um, but Well, hey, I is mean, that, is Sting available right now? Sting, Sting would be available, yeah. I mean, um, because man, the sting we've seen of late—that's true. Um, it'll be tough. It's a big difference between working with the Young Bucks and working with the Ric Flair, but still, um, Sting's. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, he could do that match in his sleep. Well, they could do the spots in their sleep. Yeah, yeah, um, and it would it would um, be easy. But the thing is, is um, well. You know, I mean, I guess Rick's going to work as a heel anyway, probably because he's a lot more comfortable that way. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I don't know if Sting, you know, that's up to Sting if he wants to do it. His name was never mentioned before, but um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's, but he's active. It's not out of the realm of possibility, I suppose. I mean, it would cost a lot of money, most likely, but um, yeah, I mean, um, it would probably be a good opponent for him. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.